I think I have to answer that the top reason that I'm a Catholic or any one of us would choose to be a Catholic is that I have come to, to know Jesus and who he is and what he taught and what he did and what he asks of his disciples and, and I want to be one of them, uh, a follower of Jesus. That, I think, has to go before all else. After that, you know, there's a lot of things that are involved in being a follower of Christ. Uh, but for, for us, and I think for, for all Christians, the Sunday assembly is, is very important, even in the, in the New Testament. Um, you know, there are exhortations not to absent ourselves from the Sunday assembly you know, lightly, um, and, and the importance of it, uh, such that you know, Paul had to write to correct abuses that were taking place at the Sunday assembly. So our gathering on Sunday for worship is, is, is key to who we are, in addition to you know, our, our personal relationship with the Lord in prayer. That's good, but it isn't complete or isn't enough. It, it also involves our gathering with other members of the family of God to give public worship. The gift of the Eucharist as a memorial of, of the redemptive act of Christ. Um, and it is the object of our worship and our veneration, you know, especially as we reserve the Eucharist in the tabernacle for the, for the purpose of prayer and, and bringing um, communion to the sick. But it doesn't mention um, our receiving, um, consuming, taking the Eucharist in and making it a part of us. And, and that's, you know, that's key. You know, Jesus says, take and eat. Unless you eat or unless you drink, it's, it, the key, the essence is, is taking it in. And, you know, while I can eat a hostess Twinkie or my favorite chili cheese corn Frito chips, um, you know, I take those in and I make them part of me, you know, once on the lips, forever on the hips. But this food that Jesus gives, his body, his blood, um, real food and real drink as he describes it, doesn't, I don't take it in and make it part of me, it makes me part of it, or more specifically, uh, part of Jesus. And, and that's the point of it. You know, when, when we go to celebrate Holy Mass, all, all the prayers and all the readings and, and the, the ritual of the, the Eucharistic liturgy, you know, the part that comes after the, uh, you know, the creed and the prayers of the faithful, that's all, you know, to, to kind of fuel the, fuel the engine to, 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 uh, to make a dynamic force for transformation, for conversion, that, that we leave there, we leave a little more like Christ, and we leave with the, uh, the desire and the commission to make Christ and the light of the gospel more present in the world that we live in. That when we receive Holy Communion, it is a statement of our union with Christ, but also it's a statement of our union with the body of Christ the Church. You know, that, so I receive Holy Communion and I'm saying by that act, and I think a lot of people don't really understand this, but I'm saying by that act, I am, I am in communion with, I, I you know, take to myself the, uh, the Church, its teachings, um, its way of life. Um, the, the Bishop of Rome as the pastor of the Universal Church, and I'm part of the Archdiocese of the Buke, and, and by you know, God's design and God's sense of humor, you know, we have this Archbishop who, you know, well, he's now my Archbishop. I don't think when I was in the seminary, and even when I was ordained, I don't think I really understood, well, what's going on here? Uh, I mean, that's terrible to say, 
in the seminary we went to daily mass we had classes on the Eucharist and you know how to celebrate Holy Mass you you know you read the black and do the red you know, that, that was a slogan in the seminary but there wasn't a I don't recall ever being uh, drawn into the mystery of the Eucharistic liturgy, the Holy Mass. And maybe not until, I'll just say it, until this um, project for the revision of the Missal, the, the, the new translation and, and all that went through that. And, and so, um, as a consequence of it, I thought, I need to I need to understand this better. I mean, so here I was a bishop, and I, I, I think that I came for the first time to a conscious realization of what it is that's, that's asked of me. You know, this gift of myself. Uh, and you know, you can take the owner's man, uh, the owner's manual, the user's manual, the the general introduction to the Roman Missal, the germ as they call it. And there's a couple places where it talks about that one of the purposes of the priest is to lead the people in the gift of themselves. And you know that whole notion of the gift of self. Um, it had you know become a. I, I believe it to be a, um, an, a, an essential, a, um, you know, the characteristic of Christian spirituality. In imitation of Christ, who gave himself on the cross, that gift which is represented under sacramental signs during Mass on the altar, that gift that was um, given by our Blessed Mother at the Annunciation, that gift that was given by all the Apostles in, in their choice to, to follow Christ and, and in the, the consequences of leave your homeland and lose your life, lay down your life and in, in the lives of all those men and women that we call holy, um, what do they have in common? The gift of self. Uh, given in love of God, a love expressed in prayer, a love expressed in, in worship, but also essentially the gift of self-given in love to other people. Um, you know, in, in service of bringing food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, consolation to those who are sorrowing, welcome to strangers, etc., etc. And that's the essence of the celebration of Mass.